This video from the barn restoration workshop will center around the steps needed to actually lift the west end of the barn that's settled from years of freeze-thaw cycles in a foundation that did not extend below the frost line. As a result, the west wall has essentially slid off from the rock foundation and is no longer vertical. It now needs to be raised and pulled back toward the structure so the wall is at the proper height and is vertically positioned above the foundation. Now, before any lifting can be done, a couple of things have to happen. First, the siding has to be removed in the areas of the vertical corner and support timbers. The siding should be cut along the horizontal girt, allowing the siding to then be re-nailed to the girt timber. The siding removal is necessary in order for the workers to attach horizontal jack beams to each of the posts. This will be made of multiple 2x5s that will be screwed together to make the equivalent of a 2x20. As was covered in an earlier video, the northwest corner timber was repaired because of severe termite damage. This should be repaired before any of the lifting begins. Removing the siding also allowed a more thorough inspection of each support timber and the bottom end areas resting on the sill plate. Any needed repairs should be made at this time. Now the goal is to have each vertical timber at the correct length so that the barn will sit properly on properly constructed piers and a new bottom sill. Really all you need to do uh, was create some holes in the barn for our 2x5s, you know, or, or your, what you're going to be lifting off of so you can pass them through the wall. Just getting ready to get the material ready to attach to the side of the post, which we'll use to lift off of. You're just going to set them up, put some pre-drill holes in them, make sure everything works, and, uh, and then what we'll do is we'll slide them through the building, screw them to the post, four on each side of the post. We basically just stack two by fives on edge on top of each other. Uh, so that we don't have a lot of deflection, so that these don't bend as we put the weight of the barn on them. And what we'll do is we'll put four more out here on this side of the post, and then we'll block in between them to straighten them all up. And we'll jack somewhere in this area. And as we go, we just build our cribbing towers. We could set it down on the cribbing tower, move our jack up, lift more if we feel we like we have to and we just keep going. Again what's important is that um, your base of your cribbing tower is not only level this way but also this way in two directions. That way as you go up your cribbing tower is not going to lean or fall over once you get the weight of the barn on it. And then uh, you're ready to lift. You've got your two by fives in, you've got them all screwed together, you've got them screwed to the post, you've got them nice and stiff, you've got your cribbing tower bases nice and level. Uh, and the idea with this barn was we're lifting it up, pulling it in, and then that way the homeowner can come in and dig out his foundation, four new piers under the post. Uh, that way, uh, get him anchored down once the barn's set down and he doesn't have to worry about the barn falling off the foundation for another 150 years. Bent connectors in walls two and three had pulled away from their joints as the west wall fell off its foundation. In the process, they sheared the wooden pins holding them together. Since the west wall was going to be lifted and pulled in toward the interior of the barn, those separated joints should slip back into place. Ratchet straps were installed between the interior wall vertical timbers at the bent connector and at ground level to the vertical timbers on the west wall. These were tightened and adjusted so that as the lift commenced, these straps would pull the wall inward. This would also include the bent joints connecting the rafters and the vertical support timber that had pulled apart. The key to an accurate lift is knowing exactly how much each vertical timber must be raised so that when the foundation piers are poured and a new sill plate is installed, the barn will be as level as the day it was built. 
Now here are two ways to achieve accurate lift measurements. One involves simple water levels in a plastic tube, and this first method uses modern laser technology. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, we do this quite a bit. But what you'd like to do is pull a measurement from the top of the rafter plate uh, in a location of the barn that you feel uh, hasn't been compromised, that we feel will give us you know, a decent, what we call a zero. There are many different spots, but I like the top of the rafter plate because then you know that you're gonna straighten out that roof line and it really kind of translates down from there everywhere in the barn. We set up a laser that spins in 360 degrees uh, that creates a level plane. On the east side of, of the drive bay, on the north and south ends of the building, we've dropped our tape down from the top of the rafter plate. And the south end measured 12 foot one and three quarter on the south end and 12 foot two and a quarter on the north end. So what I decided to do is split the difference and our number was 12 foot two down from the top of the rafter plate. We had six lifting points, so you measure down from the rafter plate at those six lifting points down to your laser line and it'll tell you how far you need to go up and so as you go around the building the lesser number you're going to get from the laser it tells you how much you need to come up so in other words on the southwest corner um, it measured something like 11 foot 11 and beings we want to be at 12 foot 2 that's a three inch lift and then what we want to do is we actually went an inch past that number so we kept the laser spinning as we lifted the barn until the tape measure read 12 foot 3 at our six lifting points. And that leaves us an inch high so when the homeowner comes in and tears out his foundation and pours his piers, he know, all he has to know is that he's one inch below the bottom of the sill plate. An alternative method of ensuring the walls are lifted to the proper height and are level is to apply the basic principle that water will seek its original height. In this case, a gallon jug of colored water with multiple tubes has been carefully filled to a level that is the same as the barn's desired lift level. The same calculations are used for both the laser method and the water tube method but instead of a rotating laser line, each beam that is going to be lifted has a water tube attached, and that is used as the lift reference. Okay, now everybody together on my count, okay? Nice even pace, something like pump, 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 right? Okay, everybody go. The actual lifting of the barn is a slow and deliberate process. If the hydraulic bottle jacks don't have the necessary reach to raise the barn in one lift, it can be done in a series of incremental increases in height. Everybody stops lifting, then the cribbing is shimmed to allow the sides to come down and rest at a higher level, thus allowing a readjustment to the height of the jack. The lifting and the readjustment of the jack base continues until the final height is achieved. If there are a limited number of jacks, the barn lift can be done in segments by rotating the jacks through the various lift areas, again ensuring an even lift and minimizing the possibility of frame damage from uneven jacking. One of the objectives of this lift was the repositioning or pulling together of the broken bent joints in the interior vertical timber supports. They were successfully pulled in with the raising of the west wall and the tension that was supplied by the ratchet straps. Now it's time to make sure those joints are firmly connected through the use of shear rings. So once we got it to where we were comfortable with it, we needed to keep that joint from separating. So what we did is we installed uh, what are called shear rings. I had basically eight inch by four inch tall steel stock bent in a U shape. We came 20 inches in from the back of the post or 12 inches in from the joint. That provides plenty of strength for us to install what are called shear rings. A shear ring is basically is a, a steel ring that has a hole in the middle and it comes with a special cutter. You chuck it in a drill. Uh, once you've got your pilot holes drilled, you know, you, you put your bracket on from the outside, mark your hole locations, both sides. Drill your pilot hole from both directions. That way, you know, in a, 
They match up in the middle. If you come from one direction only, chances are you're not gonna meet up with the hole on the other side and uh, your all thread's not gonna work or your bracket's gonna have to be twisted or you know, um, it's gonna be unsatisfactory. So you drill your pile from both sides, meet in the middle. The shearing cutter has a rod in the middle of it that um, it follows that pilot hole. And, you know, what it does is it, it basically um, cuts a groove, a circular groove um, that conforms with the, the profile of the shearing. You do that on both sides, <clears throat> and you, you gotta chisel a little bit out of the middle, and then the shearing will sit flush. Do that both sides, install your shearings, put your bracket over the top of the shearings, run your all thread through both sides, nut and washer, and uh, that's joint, that joint's probably stronger than it ever has been or ever will be. Once you get the barn lifted, it's just a matter of cutting out the old sill. And these post bottoms are actually tenoned into the existing sill. Uh, but again, everything was pretty rotten. So <clears throat> what we did is we, we just chopped off the tenons on the bottom of the post. I felt good about only cutting off the tenons. Sometimes you have to actually physically cut off some of the post bottoms. If you get into that, then your elevation and, and pulling your measurements down to your laser line changes a little bit because you have to factor in the math that you're gonna cut four, six, or eight inches off the bottom of the post. Uh, we cut the tenons off and uh, we brought a two and a half inch by eight inch um, southern yellow pine, 30 foot long. And we basically just slid them in from the side of the barn. We brought L brackets with us and we lagged it, two lag bolts into the post, a short lag into the um, sill. And essentially we just want to kind of attach it to the post bottoms, this particular job. And the idea is that uh, Dan, the homeowner, he'll come in, he'll pour piers under the post locations and then uh, that's really what's going to hold the barn up and then he can kind of just stack his limestone or maybe pour um, a short concrete knee wall under the sill. After the workshop was completed, Tom Kennedy, one of the workshop participants, was contracted by the owner to construct the concrete piers under the six vertical support timbers, then lower the barn for the final time and anchor it securely. The piers are uh, go to three feet below the ground so that they're six inches below the frost line for this area. The bottom of these piers is at least 40 inches in diameter round. Um, some of the holes got a little large uh, in digging. What we would do is come up 14 inches straight at 40 inches in diameter and then we tapered in from there uh, to the 16 inch sauna tubes. We had to make some some wood forms in some of the holes in order to to have some taper. The taper is necessary for transfer of load. Uh, from the, uh, the, the load comes up from the outside corners uh, at 40 inches and then uh, load transfers at a 45 degree angle and in order to keep the, uh, if you just came right straight down with that 16 inch tube onto that 40 inch diameter, then there's the possibility under load conditions that you'd break off an edge uh, because the load is primarily concentrated in the center and you want to transfer your, your load bearing capacity all the way to the outside edge. Uh, one thing you'll notice is a bracket a very large mm -hmm. bracket, 20 some inches up the side of the column. From the bottom of that, uh, down into the center of the, of the, the pier is a one inch diameter rod. Um, and it goes into a, an assembly of, of reinforcing bar, rebar they call it. I would say, on a count of two, open it for a count of one, and then close it. One, two, three. Open. Okay, you ready? Yep. One, two, three, open. 